Hello, we are in step three, identify your onboarding process, and I'm going to get right into this. This is a shorter uh, step. Basically, we're just after we've reviewed what onboarding is, and so far we talked about in step one what onboarding actually is, why it's important, and then uh, we talked about in step two the methods, uh, various methods of onboarding. So this one is just talking about, okay, based on that information, What's your onboarding process? What does that look like for you? So there's a couple of things to consider here when you're identifying your onboarding process. In that, what time do you have to create the onboarding process? Uh, how can you block this out into uh, maybe you know easier chunk, chunks of time for yourself? So maybe just you know sitting down on a Sunday and writing out some thoughts after you've watched, you know, the, the last two videos or, or, you know, read the last two steps, how much time do you think it would take you to do whatever the step is, whether it's the concierge, whether it's the videos, whether it's a guide or some kind of like um, orientation manual, um, you know, how long is it gonna take you to create this, this content, whatever that means for you? Um, and just thinking about that. Knowing your members' learning styles, we talked a little bit about that in section two. Um, do you, have you talked to your potential members or current members to know how they best like to consume content? Because that's really, uh, really foundational to understand if you're like doing lots of videos and people don't like watching videos who are like your members don't like watching videos that's going to mean that they're not watching your videos and you're like spending all this time making them and nobody's watching them. So I would definitely, if you haven't already um, done so, I would just like either put together a quick survey or, you know, give them a call or however you communicate um, with some of your potential ideal members or people already in your community. If you have one already going and just identify what, what content they really want to consume. What do they need in here? that would be helpful for them to get through the material. Um, if that's like resources, like books or, you know, or podcasts that they can listen to, to like really help them in their journey of transformation. Um, some people don't want resources, they just want your resources. So um, you telling them as the expert, um, but how do they like to learn from you? So video, audio, those are really uh, good things to know about your members. And then being able to support them in any stage of their journey. So whether um, they're coming in as somebody who kind of has a background and understanding around the topic or somebody that's new. So that goes back, uh, it goes to a little bit about your language when you're creating either videos or written text that you're speaking the member's language and you can, when you're doing the ideal member interviews or discovery calls, you can actually take the words that they use and then actually use those words in your onboarding process, you know, to relate more to them. So that's just a, a, a way to really know what stage they're in. If you know that they're all beginners or if you know that they're in varied stages, then you could address those different types of groups of people. Okay. The next, um, how to build a sense of belonging in your community. So this, this goes to connecting the members right away. Um, in the very beginning of when you invite people in your community, you wanna connect them to each other. Um, and so what we try to do in Find Calm here with the Mighty Mastermind um, over the last year, we've connected each with each other and created really strong bonds with each other in that small group and that small cohort. Um, I'd like to start doing that more with uh, the, the Find Calm Here community, but I'm in the beginning stages of just having relaunched. And so I'm still working on improving that process as I work with the members to learn more about them. So you don't have to be in a place of, you know, not having launched. You could actually be in a place of, I just still really want to understand my members better. And that's the learning journey <laughs> in itself. And understanding how they have an interest in being in your space and what time they have to be able to commit to your community and how they want to connect with others. Um, so those are just things to think about. Then uh, getting testers on for your onboarding new member program. So 
um, getting some people, whether they're already community members or um, your ideal members or volunteers, but getting at least you know one or two people in the Mighty Network to be able to work with you on improving your onboarding before you invite maybe the official launch of a course or opening of a community. So those are things to think about. I have a checklist here for you to go through, and it just goes basically through all of the things I just talked about in the last couple sections, as well as this one. So uh, we use the call method here, so getting clarity on which method you're going to use, uh, awareness on what's the best process with your members in mind, uh, learning on maybe there's something that you need to learn in order to create the content for your onboarding plan and process, and if that's necessary or if not. Uh, and then taking time to think uh, how you'll organize the onboarding process, what you'll need before you begin creating it, um, how much time can you commit again to the process. So just thinking about those things and any other suggestions you guys have, gals and guys have, I'm happy to hear. I uh, will see you in the next step.